All righty. Welcome to the first ever life painting stream video from our channel. We've been wanting to do one for ages. Never actually got around to it. So this is the first time. I don't know. It'll probably end up to be a very bad idea. And Levi, I want to have a couple of words. Talk to the mic here. Uh, I don't know what to say yet. Just say uh, you can go. Wish you, wish you happy painting, Papa. <laughs> I wish you a happy painting, Papa. <laughs> that was a script I gave him. Probably not the best script. Thank you, Levi. Yeah, so uh yeah, we'll be we'll be painting. All right, so what are we painting today? All right, so today we've got the revenant seeker here. Yep. And um and let's Papa. switch to the other cam. Yes, Levi? Papa? Yes, Levi. Can I do some stuff in the video? Uh like what? Putting the plane bus in. Yeah, probably. But it's also bedtime, though. Let, let, we're going to fix the camera because the camera now, it's uh, flipped it the other way. All right. Okay. That's why I said this is the first time we're doing this. Uh, yeah. So let's hope everything will be all right. Okay. So go into this low camera. We can see uh, this uh, Arch Revenant from Sylvanus. I've primed him uh, white, with the new white scar primer. Looking pretty nice and smooth there. Much better than the previous one. Now, uh, I'm going to be painting this in the painting scheme of the Lady of Vines that I painted the other day. Okay, let's see. You can see on camera here. Um, I went for the cherry blossom style. Because I, I don't know if you've seen our previous videos my Stormcast and the Daughter of Cain have a lot of red in them. So this one will also have plenty of red. I mean, uh, the the standard color of brown and green, that's cool. But I, I don't know why I just like red. So I'm going for it. Yeah. So because they're in the same army, the uh, the Ark Revenant, I, I lost one of my hands because Levi's sitting on me. Um but anyway, yeah, so I think this Ark Re Revenant will be pretty cool. I don't know how exactly I'm going to paint him. I do know the, the brown parts uh, of this body here. I'm really missing my arm here. So um, this this part here, we're going to try to paint it brown, just like the Lady of Vines in the background. And then we're going to put plenty of red cherry blossom around all the leaf area. And maybe his wings will be red or maybe green. I don't know. We'll, Cherry blossom color. Yeah, so we will uh, we'll figure that out when we get there. So I guess, well, why are we doing this? There are plenty of painting videos, and I realize a lot of the painting videos out there are really for experts, um, and I'm not. So for anyone who feels uh, intimidated to paint, you know what? Maybe it's not so bad. We can do it together. Yeah, you can watch me fail live. Uh, so going to set the bar pretty low. Anyone can enjoy this. And, uh, if you're watching this, thank you. And if you're not, I expected that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's go. All right. So Levi, did you want to do something? What did you want to do? Let's put the paintbrush in. You want a paintbrush in. Okay. Oh, what color are you going to put it? Whatever one. Okay. They don't really have colors on them yet. So I'm going to do that. You know what? You can give... This this guy a good shake. I think I'm gonna go with Saigal Brown, nice dark brown. And, and this will get a shake. See, King, please. Alrighty, <laughs> quite a good workout, eh? It's a good workout. Alrighty, okay. All right. So now that we have it. So, um, okay, I'm going to get my arm back, if you don't mind. You can come down. See? Thank you. All right, let's go. First car, let's see what it looks like. Let's see if we like it. Ooh, okay. It looks like black to me. Sorry? 
That looks like black to me. Yeah, it looks pretty dark. That's yeah, good. Yeah, pretty much. That's good. I was going to put some um, other paint to make it darker, but I think that's that's dark enough. That's good. All right. Add some water. As long as it's started. Okay. All right. Okay. Got our giant jar of water. Um, it doesn't fit in the camera very well, so I'm just going to put it on the side here. And uh, let's <laughs> let's go. Now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get a handle. Yeah. Good old handle. You can use anything. Or actually, you don't need a handle. So the first, like, 20 miniatures I've painted, I had no handle. By the way, I used this. I used this, though. You used the bigger one. Yep. Just so you know, Levi, because you're so far away, the, the microphone can't really hear you. Yep. I know. Okay. I'm just back when I'm talking to you. I see. Background talking. Very nice. I wonder how that's going to uh, look to the real world. Okay. Anyway, so let's go. I'm going to start putting some sign so brown. It looks a bit brown, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. All right. So let's go. Now, this part. On the inside. This part has to be <laughs> careful. Go nice and slow because once you paint over the other areas, it's going to be twice the amount of work to clean it up. Yeah, using white to primer color. Yeah, so Levi just said, yeah, if you mess it up, you're going to have to put white over it again. And that is totally true. Okay, I'm taking my time here to try to not paint the skull underneath his foot or her foot I don't know because otherwise I really would have to re whiten that part where's that skull that you're talking about the skull is here see he, he's, he's got his foot on the skull oh he's stepping on a skull yes you know what, I'm, what? Gonna, I'm gonna swap spots Okay. Oh, you, you guys couldn't really see before, but believe I was literally sitting on my lap, closing one of my my arms and my foot. And now he's swift switched over to the left now. Now, one of the things I didn't know when I started painting was. Um, Brush control. I mean, people on these pro YouTube painting channels talk about it all the time. I don't know what they were talking about. And to explain it in my own layman terms is if you're putting your brush on the model and somehow no paint is coming out or not as much paint is coming out as you expect, that's the time when you need to put your paintbrush into the paint to get more. Because keep brushing in the same area with a lack of paint on the brush is is not fun and it makes it look bad okay leave i just climbed on my lap again um <laughs> just for one moment and then you know how that happens yeah so uh he, he's right here so <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's, he, he's saying <laughs> painting this guy alone is not fun enough. Uh, we can do it together. That's what he's saying. And uh, Papa's already terrible, so let's make him suffer a bit more. And uh, <laughs> if, if it doesn't turn out good, he can be the excuse. That's what he's telling me. Subtly. All right, let's go back to the model because this is a painting video. So let's go back to that. Okay, now this is something interesting here. I'm I'm trying to stream off my Mac using my uh, using my mobile phone. What I notice here is every time I switch camera, it's on upside down. So <laughs> <laughs> it's upside down. Yeah, I got I got to learn to fix that next time. Well, and, my uh... crane never comes back. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. 
Well, I'm not going to finish my setup until we make my own like, tech level and two bits upgrade. Uh, sorry, Levi, what are you talking I'm about? I'm going to make my own two ISIS Vanguard bits upgrades and one tech level. It's tech level six. There's no such thing. So I'm making my own. And my own objective and my second day objective. Okay, I see. You're talking about ISS Vanguard. It's got nothing to do with this painting, though. Yeah. But I'm just not going to continue until we do those things. Okay, well, we can we can play ISS Vanguard tomorrow. Well, actually, probably more like Saturday. Don't you mean Pleasure Vanguard? Pleasure, yeah, Pleasure Vanguard. That's right. Yeah. Okay, Levi, I've just gone to bed, so let us continue. So, you can see that I'm really taking my time in this area, because everything is white, and if I accidentally paint over some bits, it's going to be really hard to clean up. And you can see a bit of mistake happening here. See the bottom of the shield? Um... It's not supposed to be brown. I accidentally put my brush over it. Now it's kind of ruined. <sighs> so, if that happens to you while you're painting, you kind of got two options. You could go and fix it straight away, or just resign to it <laughs> and uh, and think that okay, I, I'm going to fix it later. And in my case, I'm going to fix it later. Because it is at the bottom of the shield, it's not that prominent, um, and I, yeah, it's easy to patch up later. But if it's like on his face or somewhere like up there, obvious, then I'll have to fix it straight away. All right, well, let's keep going. Uh, okay, something's happening on my computer, so I'm gonna. A quick look. Okay, all good. Let's continue. I get a feeling like I need to put some background music on. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty dull. Ah, okay. I just found my first mistake here. Um, and when that happens, just stop, rinse your brush. So paint don't dry on your brush while you're trying to fix stuff. It is that little area. I'm going to point it out with this. That area should be a little gem. But I've just put Saigon Brown all over it and making it really dark. So I'm going to try to fix it by using a clean ink brush. Just rub the paint off. You see this? Just gently rubbing it off. I don't need a complete clean. But when you do this, the pigment comes off usually if you do it quick enough. And um, you can spend as much effort as you want here. But for me, um, I don't need it to be totally clean. I just need it to be not super dark when I put the next layer on. Um, and that looks a lot better already. Okay. All right. So let's go back and fix more areas. I can see there's there's some areas here that's white. I just need to fill the gaps. And uh, yeah. let's, let's go. Now, when I'm painting this, depending on uh, the color grading of the camera and how it processes the color you might be able to see that this leg is way darker than that one i don't know if you can see it with this lighting here this leg is darker than that one now why is that it will probably happen to a lot of beginners um as you go through because the problem is sometimes when you wet your brush and you try to wash it 
uh, and you dip it back in the paint again, you're going to have more water on your brush than your previous time when you went for the color cleanup. So this is more diluted on this other leg as opposed to this one. Now, if you don't realize it and you just keep painting, what will happen at the end is you're going to have models with weird colors where one part is darker than another while you are thinking that you're using the same paint the whole time and that kind of sucks right so now that i realize and i've caught this what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, close my window because it's popped up with me randomly um and i'm gonna go back get more paint on the brush and do another layer i'm gonna put a darker layer of pigment on top of the original one and i can keep doing that until i'm satisfied with the with the color can you can you see from this angle like this is way darker than this one so it's definitely something you want to fix because otherwise it makes no sense that the leg it's closer to the light source which is up above it's looking way darker than the leg that's under a lot of things now I can tell that this is running out of pigment because it's getting lighter and lighter. So I'm going to have to refill. Every time I do that, anytime when I'm not using the paintbrush, I get in the habit of washing it in the jar. So maybe I just put the put the jar here, as you can see, see me doing something with it. Yep, just to clean the brush, get some more Saigo Brown. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Much better. Way darker. Now, as you can see, I'm not doing very well to paint and talk at the same time. So I'm guessing I'm going to be pretty slow today. And I have no idea how long this is going to take. So, I'm going to give myself a limit of two hours for anyone who's watching now or after the fact and we'll see where we get to in a couple of hours and that's also kind of true for um paint jobs in in my experience anyway uh for whatever there are lots of times where you won't necessarily finish a model in one go and that's cool you can just come back to it anytime so, so I go through that. I'm trying to think about what color these parts are because right now everything's white. Um, but yeah, I think I think these areas should be the open parts. So that's cool. Just do that. Oh, here's a, here's a newbie tip if you're a new painter that's watching this. And that is good lighting is super important in my experience. You don't need the most expensive or best light, but you want a good light. And what that means is, well, in this case, you want a flat light source or light source from multiple angles. Someone just gave us some bam spam. <laughs> How distasteful. Um, there'll be no dating on this channel or what? Okay, so I'm going to block those comments. Um, what was I talking about? Yeah. So you want an even light source because as you navigate your hand around the model in different angles, if you have a single light source, what's likely to happen is you're just going to be over it and you're going to block it and you're not going to be able to see it clearly. And that's when disaster happens. Because you can't really paint what you can't see. Well, at least I can't. So, yeah. Okay. And... Um... I think in, my, in the back of my mind, I've just convinced myself that I need to put some background music on. So I'm going to do that now. 
All right. So how do I do this in this app? Just very quickly. Um, I swear there was a panel where I can do some music. Right, that's it. Okay. Alrighty. Music is on, so I can't hear anything. But that's okay. Or maybe it was on the whole time and I couldn't hear it. Either way, that's cool. So let's continue. So I'm doing this arm right now. Let's continue to do that. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Just do it around now. We change our mind. We'll try and drink color later. Now, if you notice, I am turning this model a whole lot to try to, of course, see what I'm painting. I'm trying to find excess point for my brush to go in yeah because if my brush can't reach it I have a problem okay okay I want this as an experience that's useful to other people so I'm going to talk through what I'm thinking right now I've got a relatively big brush here because big brushes just makes it quicker to put paint on, right? But the downside of big brushes is easy to hit everything else that you're not supposed to. So right now, I'm trying to get to this tiny little area between his shield and his arm. And I'm not a pro, pro painter, so my brush control is not that good. And if I do this with this... With this brush, it's going to go everywhere, yeah? And so that is the call for me to change brush. I'm going to go to a smaller brush size. Now, there are lots of technical terms in the size of brushes. You have size 1, size 2, size 3, double O, triple O. Anyway, doesn't matter. So for new painters, what you want is, oh, well, my recommendation anyway, one big one some medium ones this to me is a medium one and then finer points and then a tiny one because they all do something different but if you can't if you can't buy them all or you don't want to invest or you, you feel like it's this is too much commitment and you just buy one or two go for a big one because it carries a lot of paint uh, actually, I got this guy from uh, from Woolworths, which is a local supermarket brand here in Aussie. Um, five bucks for, I don't know, 25 brushes. So I don't know how much this costs. So this, uh, my point is, this is dirt cheap. And I paint a lot of models of it. This uh, Lady of Vine, the majority of it is paint by this super cheap brush, right? So you don't need a expensive brush. But while I'm painting this Lady of Vines, see some fine points here I had to use a finer brush so I got a smaller brush this is a size one brush and a double zero brush to do the, to do the eyes because otherwise see how fine that is that's impossible to do with that one that's my point okay anyway so let's go back to our model See that this is a lot thinner, this one on the, on the left hand side. So we're going to use this one to try to get to the, uh, the tricky part in here. I think this is a thumb. It's print that. 
as well. Okay, cool. Alrighty, let's continue. I think his arm, I want it to be a different color. Uh, what are there? some tree areas? I guess this is like a tree. Yeah, and some leaves coming out of it, so it must be a tree. Don't want to keep using this brush. Um, yeah, okay. For now. Now let's talk through why I went through the thinking process. When I was uh, when I was just starting out, I never thought about changing the my brush as I paint, and that's probably one of the most useful things I can pass on to new painters. So logic says the bigger your brush, the more paint it can carry. Right? Duh. But what? Also happens as you can see here, I end up making many more brush strokes to cover a small area than the other brush that I was using. And what that means is uh, I'm now more prone to errors. Yeah, because I'm making a lot more strokes and if I make one error out of every 20 strokes, I'm just going to make more errors. Not to mention, a small brush carry less paint. So that means you've got to go back into the pot. Or you paint pool to get more paint more often which is quite annoying and hard to gauge for new painters okay another mistake here <laughs> i mean you can think in you might say i'm being anal here so there's a, a dot in this white in his hair now I could just leave it I could paint it I could fix it now so when you, the only you fix it the easier so I'm gonna do it now so I'm gonna get my uh, my scrubbing brush again just rub over that part ah oh, too late already yep too late it doesn't come off So what that means is I'm going to have to fix it with white. Yeah, so that's going to be step two. All right, we'll, we'll stick with brown for now, do all the areas, and then we'll clean it up after before we get to the next phase. for going fast here well, this is not a speed paint competition and there's nothing wrong with street paint by the way if you want to paint it really fast that's your thing go do that because when I first started the first army that I've ever painted um was a song of ice and fire now for those of you who don't know that game it was a brilliant game brilliant
I'm busy. Do I have to mute the whole time? <laughs> oh, my oh, you know what? This when um, I think I just muted myself momentarily because I took off my <laughs> I took off my AirPods <laughs> and Apple computer kind of uh, I guess you know some magic and I'm just. That's so funny. Oh, it's terrible. Um, anyway, anyway, what were we talking about? <sighs> right. So, the topic I was on before was what do you watch or what do I used to watch when I started painting to get inspiration, get some guidance, and you know, some tips and tricks. And I mentioned Squidma, really nice guy, nice content. Um, but got a bit technical for me. Yep. Or another one I also watched. Uh, it's Vince Ventura. So I didn't actually Google him. I think I Google something like um, painting Crondus, painting dragons from Stormcast, and his video came up, and. Yeah, and I watched it. I couldn't say I used to enjoy watching his videos because I, I found that he's very advanced and he's got a whole bunch of paints that I don't have. Yeah, and I, and I feel like I connect, couldn't connect to that even though I know he's got lots of good tips and knowledge and content. Um, but still, I really like his stuff. Painting aside, he taught me um, to play the game of Warhammer with intent. So be nice, tell people what you intend to do. Everyone ha has a better time, less chance for uh, mistakes and an unhappy gaps of communication. Anyway, I'm not explaining myself very well on the, on the concept of play of intent, but having to focus on painting and talking at the same time, it's a new thing for me. Yeah, it's a new thing for me. Okay. All right, so this side of his body looks pretty dark. That's good. That's good. So I say it's almost done. The first step is almost done. Almost. Ooh. Now, a hot tip here for new painters, try to fill all the surface area. Now, what I mean by that is I paint, I, I primed as many white, yeah? So the priming means putting a layer of special paint called primer. On the miniature to help the paint stick and also give it a base color i put i primed this guy white well there are two reasons one is this this white primer is very smooth it's great for what it does so it makes the paint stick and it doesn't add any bad side effects to your model so that's a good primer and the second one is i like to paint on white instead of black because when there's a white part that isn't painted like the back of his heel, I don't know if the camera can see it very well, right, right there, now the back of his heel isn't painted properly, because of the white, it's very easy to spot, and I can just go and fill the back in, and I like that, yeah, now, one thing you may have noticed while I'm painting, that hopefully you don't do too often is I am using a paint called contrast paint. Saigo Brown's a contrast paint from Citadel. I like it because it has got a special formula in the paint 
to uh, work into the crevices. So once I put paint on, it'll work into the gaps of the model and to create that, that depth, which typically would require a couple extra, a couple extra more steps. Yeah. Now, when you, when you using contrast paint, typically you don't go back and forth because when you go back and forth, um, it creates lines and, and, uh, unbalanced distribution of paint. And that's bad because it doesn't look very natural. Now I'm doing this a lot here because I don't really care about how smooth it is a lot of the time. And uh, there's nothing I can fix later. So that's one. And the other one is because this is wood, just having some extra line on the wood makes certain parts darker. I think that's cool. That's what wood is, right? Well, at least that's what I tell myself. Okay. All right. I don't think this part is brown because this is part of the... I think it's part of the beetle. Oh, this... This, oop, this bird here. And I want to definitely paint a different color. So... I think brown is almost done. Oh, here we go. Okay, I messed that part up. Let's see if we can cl clean it right away. It's probably too late at this point. Didn't see it until now. Now, okay, so you're thinking, doesn't matter if I don't clean it. And the answer is, yeah, it probably doesn't. Unless you're a bit of a perfectionist. <laughs> um then yeah then you then you want to clean it because there will be some spots that's somehow darker <laughs> um but yeah it really doesn't matter that much okay so i think the base layer is good base layer is good all righty so then now let's have a look at the next part. What do I want to paint next? Got the, got the tree bark now. Mm. I could do the highlights on the tree now, or I can leave that. What? Move on to the next thing. I think I'm going to do the red. I'm going to do the cherry blossom stuff. So, once again, I'm going to go back to my most recent painted mini, Lady of Vines. I went exactly that um, that order. I painted the bark first, and then I painted the cherry blossoms. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is... I'm going to clean the brush. Just shake, 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 shake. Tap, tap. Okay. You see, I have a paper towel here. That's just to check if my brush still have paint on it because you don't want too much paint after you wash it on the brush. Because otherwise, you'll be mixing colors, right? Okay, so once that's done, um, this is clean. Let's look for the next paint. Next paint we're going to use is Doomfire Magenta. It's one of the new paints from Citadel. It's also a contrast paint. This one's flatter, so it's less less uh, depth, the effect of depth. But I, I like the color and it has a very nice coverage. Jargon alert. Jargon alert. What's coverage? Yeah, so, so coverage to me is a term that describes how much paint transfer from here to there how and how easy does that happen yep this coverage is bad to me that means it's a lot of work or extra work to transfer paint from here to there yeah and that's not good easy coverage means less work more enjoyable well for me anyway yep. okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna follow the same uh painting scheme for the lady of vines see the back of her um the back of her has got these leaves on it and it also happens here i'm going to do exactly the same thing right so i'm going to use doom fire magenta and here we go just 
all over. Now I see, oh, that's interesting. Right here, they've got a little trinket. So I'm going to not paint the same color as that. Paint around it. Can you see how fast the paint is getting onto the model from my brush? Oh, so fun to use. Such a good feeling. Well, it's not as good as uh, dry brushing it. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. I just realized I'm mumbling a lot, so thanks for bearing with me. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. To go nice and slow here, otherwise I'm gonna get paint all over that part. Oh well, yeah, sometimes I always like to use my fingers to smudge them. Why not? It works. Yeah. I don't need to pick up another brush. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this side. Dun dun dun. Dun, dun, dun. I really should take some pictures. But because I'm testing a new setup today, my phone is streaming right now. <laughs> I can't use it to take pictures. Oh well. It's going to take some screen grabs later. Okay. <laughs> if you notice here, because this, this brush is so fat. It hit the, it hit that leaf there. <laughs> Luckily, it's also a leaf that I want to uh, be painted in this color, so that's cool. All right, let's continue. I still remember. When I was watching um, painting videos, when I started this hobby, uh, it could be a squid mark video or or um, Gobble Town video, Gobble Town hobbies, and they were talking about base painting, putting the base layer on, and that's the most boring part, and I struggled to understand what that meant. Is that a priming thing? Like, is it to get the model ready? What is it basting? Now, let me explain. Okay, actually, I've got to pause for a moment. I can't, my brain can't decide what I'm looking at here, what color that should be. Uh, I think that part should be pink. All right, let's keep going. All right, so. What are you saying? Base painting. Oh, uh, sorry. Base. Putting the base layer on. Yeah, what does that mean? So, the base layer in this hobby, at least to me, yeah, enough disclaimers, um, refers to painting, putting a color on the model without building it up. Well, what does building up mean? I just made a mistake, so I'm going to clean that first before I explain. Can't multitask. Yep. So, yeah, okay, let me clean it up first. Let me clean it up first. Because it's fresh. It's easy to clean. Or so I thought. <laughs> yeah, it's coming up. Slowly. Okay, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, okay. So let's talk about base layering versus building it up. This Lady of Vines that I have in my hand right now. I keep going back to it because it's the last model I painted and I really enjoyed it. So, see this area here is brown. It's got a few layers of brown and his hands and claws here have a different shade. Yeah. So building it up means, first I put the same paint, Saigor Brown, on this layer. Boom. 
all of this. And then afterwards, I use a progressively lighter color. Like, I think I use Karak Stone, I use Screaming Skull, I use another one as well. Steel Legion Grab. Well, that's not the point. The point is, if I put these paint next to each other, can you see that? That is super dark. That is lighter and lighter. And you can have as many of these in between as you want. Or you could just have two of these and mix them yourself. Yeah, I'm not much of an artist, so I just paint them out of the pot. This is a pot, by the way. Paint straight out of the bottle. And so when you build lighter and lighter layers on it, uh, you'll see the highlights like this. And that's what we call building it up, like building layers on top of it. So your first step is literally just to put brown on it, and then you can start, you know, selectively highlight things that looks cool to you or that's fun to you but you don't have to do that you, you totally don't have to put multiple layers on it and make it all cool you could but even if you don't it's still cool oh i just got the wrong paint yeah, okay yeah, multitasking is tough <laughs> all right what are we doing okay yep this is part I need to fix Oh, this is tricky. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay. Oh, I can feel my brush hitting a whole bunch of stuff it shouldn't hit. As you're, as you're painting, here's another tip from newbie to newbie, but newbie who's paint a couple hundred models, yeah? So, so as you're painting, sometimes it's worthwhile to spin it around and let, you know, let yourself look at it from a different angle with different sources of light hitting it because as you spin it, sometimes where you think you've painted, um, you'll find there are gaps of white that wasn't obvious to you before but because you've spun it around and look at it with different angle of light hitting it um you see things that you didn't see before yep. okay all right let's continue so let's do this part here yeah okay let's continue yeah, so let, let's talk about the hobby a little bit more while I'm doing this. Uh, how did I start painting Sylvaneth? Well, I'm going to start from the beginning. So I started with Stormcast Eternals. And for those of us who didn't see our videos before, uh, what got us in first place was the Dominion box that came out, I don't know, 18 months ago, maybe. And what I read when it first came out was, well, A, I always want to try Warhammer because it's like the, the most premium war game there is in the market with the best models. So I've been told. So, yep. So I always want to try that. And then when Dominion came out, I read that is super value and it's really easy. And the, no... A better time than this, I read, and I quote from one of the websites, to start playing Warhammer than now, in third edition, with a lot of value in the starting box. I thought, okay, yeah, all right, okay. But that still seems, you know, not my jam. Um, I'm, oh, I'm just going to quickly talk about what I'm doing. I've just switched to a bigger brush, and I want to put another layer on it because the pink before was a bit too light for me so I want darker so I'm just put another layer on top now I have, a, have an option here to put another layer on it with a different color but I can't be bothered and for simplicity sake of this video I'm just gonna put another layer on top and it'll immediately look darker that's good. That's what I want. Okay. 
Right, so back to the Dominion story. So, oh, cool, okay. Maybe now's the time to start. And I thought long and hard, and I spent, I don't know, 10, collectively, probably 10, 20 hours while I'm doing dishes over many nights. Um, and I thought, oh, Stormcast sounds awesome. Stormcast Eternals, that is. And the primary reason is they've got cool armor. Some of the new models look really cool, by the way. Uh, they've got new armor, and they have dragons. They've got a lot of dragons, and I like dragons. So I went to Stormcast, and also to sell myself that concept was, well, Stormcast has the biggest roster of every faction in Age of Sigma. So I've learned. So what that means is it's got the most re flexibility and replayability of all the factions. So if I started with Stormcast, I never have to buy another army. Yep, I would never need to buy another army. No, I, that's what I told myself. Yep, that's what I told myself. And uh, this would be army number four. Well, uh, was it said four? Yeah, four. If I count crew boys, which I don't, so it's just three. Okay, I don't know. If any of you can see that, there's a tiny little gap between this brown and the red. I'm just going to ignore it for now. Yeah. I'm going to fix this. Okay, cool. Cool. I would say this cape is kind of done. Well, the base layer anyway. Okay, nice. Let's do the other bits. Here I blossom here. Here I blossom here. So, while I'm painting the leads in, it's very fun, by the way. Like I get to play with Wally because I got to find the leaves. Then I need to I get to call them in. Two games in one. Right. Oh, made a mistake there. Let's pink on a bit of a log. Let's see if that's cleanable. Please be cleanable, please. Yes, okay, it's coming up. Okay. Happy with that. Let's move on. Well, how about it? We are 59 minutes in. I only got two colors on this model. <laughs> There'll be a lot of veteran and seasoned painters can laugh at me at my speed yep but that's okay i enjoy the process and this is a so i tell myself video for beginners so i don't need to fake the speed I don't know, have you guys watched those videos, painting videos, where the video is 10 minutes, and then when you paint it yourself, it's like 5 hours. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I started the same time as the video. I prepped just like the video suggested. And here I am, 5 hours later, <laughs> still going. And they're finished already. What? I guess those are maybe more expert level videos. Because they already know all the techniques. They're not interested to paint slowly <laughs> like me. Uh, they just want to see what kind of colors and what, they, and what they'll put. Like techniques they're going to use. And I get that. That's cool. 
Well, am I going to do another painting video? I don't know. You guys tell me. Let me know in the comments. If you are a, an audience or follow this channel, yeah, I would appreciate your feedback. Okay, oh, that looks nice. That pink is nice. Oh, 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 disaster happened. Just use my fingers, because it works. <laughs> well, it's wet. Yeah. Fingers are fantastic, by the way. And just dip it into the... Pot of water, wash your hands, done. Don't let other people tell you it's not elegant. Okay. Fingers work. Let's see if I can clean that a little further. And by the way, if you don't clean it, it's totally cool. You can just put another layer of paint on top. But yeah, I try to get into a good habit. It's for myself. Okay, all right, cool. Now, at this point in time, I could paint all the brown parts here as well. To finish the cycle brown and the, and the brown parts. Actually, let's do that. It's because I still got some brown in the palette, might as well. So first is I'm going to fix the bit of this area. It's still white. Okay, that's better. Um, this area, yep, white. Oh, the brush can't get can't get into it. Okay, cool. Saw so it. Let's see, the heels do with the light. I'll fix that. Sorry, I'm whispering a little bit. Hopefully this mic can pick it up okay. Because um, the family is in bed, sleeping. Yep. Obviously, I can't be streaming this during work. <laughs> so, the only time to do it is in the middle of the night. Yep. For you guys. And for me. Yep. Let's not pretend. I don't enjoy what I do, so it's also for me. But hopefully it will benefit somebody. I guess particularly if this is the first model that you paint for some reason. Or the first Sylvaneth model you paint and you're new into the hobby. Hopefully this helps you. Because there are no advanced techniques I've done yet. And I try to go through it as new painter friendly as possible yep you can see me fail and you can see me succeed slowly okay is it time to change the size of the brush yeah maybe let's do that Now at this point I'm still going relatively slow because I want that skull to be a completely different color, maybe a lighter color. So I don't want to put any brown on it if possible. Otherwise, that lighter color will not come through. Okay, get in there. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, mistake. Can you see? I just put brown all over the skull. So I'm going to quickly clean that up. Now in this case, this brush is not going to be able to get in there. So I'm going to have to use the same brush. I'm just trying to swipe it off. And you can kind of see that I'm, I'm getting it off. And I imagine, I visualize it as in my brush is pushing this paint away from where it landed. Oh, yep. And it has to go one way because if your brush goes back and forth, I'm going to push the paint on the darker part to the lighter part as well. So only go this way. Happy with that clean job. Let's continue. Yeah, so I was saying, <laughs> going all over the place tonight. Um, when I started Stormcast Eternals, I thought I really, I really thought it was going to be the only army that I'll ever need. But uh, you see, what happened was <laughs> I found a lot of what I call awesome deals in the second hand market like I mean they, they're really good it's still good but being a new player everything's exciting right <laughs> a lot of shiny objects and um, because I had such a good deal on some of the some of the pieces I didn't feel like I uh, invested too much capital That was me justifying to get more units. And then I got my friends into it. Then that's when it went to next level. Yep. Next level. Oh, wow. That's cool. Okay. I thought that was actually a mouth from a creature, but it's not. It's just the, the nostril of a skull. By the way, for all my friends, my actual friend who's not watching this right now, I forgive you. <laughs> That's cool. I am crazy enough to stream this video while the World Cup is on. What an idiot. What an idiot. But um, once it's online, it's online, right? And I have been thinking about doing a YouTube video on painting for a long time, but never got around to it. So I guess this is it. And uh, learn the most when you struggle, right? So I'm struggling a bit today. Hopefully I learned from this. Actually, I did. The camera, yeah? I need to sort out this bloody camera for next time. Okay. Okay. Looking better, looking better. Oh, ooh, turning here. Lots of white on the back side. Turn that as well. Oh, back side. Mm -hmm. I know what one embarrassing thing happened today. I took a lift and I thought I was in the ground floor and I started singing in the top of my lungs. Poorly. <laughs> That's the embarrassing part. Only to realize I only the, <laughs> the elevator only went one floor down. And then there was this uh, lady who got in the lift and she <laughs> she obviously heard my terrible singing from the other side of, of the door of the uh, elevator and she was uh, she was being very polite in holding her laughter. <laughs> but I know she knew. I knew she knew. Yeah. She just didn't pay me out. <laughs> By laughing out too loud. So. Yep. Okay. And 
cherry pl blossom part. I think it's pretty good. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. Yep. Let's go on my brush. That's it. That's it. Very nice. And uh, finish it up. With brown. Very nice. Done. Mostly. Just fixing some areas that should be brown. And some but somehow the uh, the paint never got onto the model. Yeah, fixed it. Cool. So once again, this step called putting the base layer of paint on is about populating the model of the colors that you want. Depending on how how much you want to invest into your model, you could stop right after putting the base colors on. True story. Yep, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. Okay, yeah, cool. It already looked way better than before. Okay, Ooh, I need to stretch, just stretch my back a little bit. Um, and if this same music is still on, I'm going to change it to a different track. Okay. Now let's take a step to think about what I want to do here. Mm. Brown. Mm. What did I? What did I do? Okay. Going back to Lady of Vines because why I keep going back to her is they're in the same army, same army share, the same painting scheme. So I want to see what I did with the colors on this one. So the sprites here are kind of red with some highlights. So maybe the wings would be that. And I think this is a spirit of some kind. So there's no skin color, but more of this bright color. Okay. Okay. All right. Getting slightly more inspired about the next steps. Um. Ooh. Ooh, I'm going to fix that. Cool. Why I did that is I'm still kind of thinking about this model, the base color level. So if I see anything that needs fixing, now's the time to, for me, because that's how my brain works. I group things together. Okay. You don't have to do that. You could do that anytime. Okay. All right. So now I've got that base layer on. I think it's time to do his head. All right. So if the wings are going to be a bit darker, I think I'm going to do shades of red, pink, and white on here and then maybe much darker red maybe purple but grade you know have a bit of a gradient color on it a bit so it's a little bit more interesting um yeah that can work yeah that can work and i'm drawing some inspiration from my marathi painting which was very fun by the way We'll talk about that another day. Okay, all right, let's do it. So, let's get some red. This is pink, so I don't want that. I want red. One of my favorite red is Blood Angels Red because it's the first contrast paint I've ever bought. And I uh, I started Lannister on the Song of Ice and Fire with this Blood Angels Red. It's almost it's almost used up. Great bottle of paint. Great. Okay. 
All right. So one, two. We'll start small. Three. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Even though paint's still falling off here. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's not waste paint. <laughs> Asian in me is coming out. Okay, what makes pink? Well, red and white. <laughs> And my white here is going to be apothecary white, which is not a real white. It's pretty dark for white if you think about it. Look, literally, apothecary white. White. This doesn't look white, does it? It looks like gray, black. But anyway, after you shake it, give it a shaking magic. Ta da! Becomes gray. Anyway, it's not white, but um, that's the effect that I want. So instead of, um, so I've got two options here, yeah, because I want it pink, I could thin it down with uh, something called contrast medium or just water or any medium. Uh, I like contrast medium a lot because uh, you know how I was talking about um, that formula seeps through to the crevices and creates depth for you so that's cool that way uh, this is also a contrast paint um, so instead of just thinning it thinning the color i'm make, making it deliberately whiter so that's what i'm doing here okay i'm gonna put on my palette on my wet palette and i've just accidentally put some red on it so i need to get rid of that <laughs> okay cool Mix mix time. Do I like this color? Do I like that color? Hmm. Yeah, okay. Still very red though. Hmm. More white. make it a little bit wider i think that's still too red for my liking so i'm gonna go in here and some more white here okay let's do this okay that's good that's good by the way there's no science to this so whatever you feel like you like that color do that color yeah. it's not a competition here yeah? okay i like that Alrighty, let's do it. So, a bit scared here. This is at the moment all white, right? Okay, let's go. So that's kind of pinky compared to that color, which is exactly what we're going for. Oh, okay. Gotta go slow here to not hit the the weapon with this color. Oh yeah, okay. Kinda. Yeah, it's alright. It's got a little line there, but I'll let it fly. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Oh, I hit the helmet. Needs to clean that up. Yep, need to clean up. Why I'm doing it right now is I really want the helmet to be a different color. So, yep. And here's a tip. Yep. It's for new painters out there. If you can trust me, that is. Yep. Um, <laughs> if you find yourself making a lot of mistakes, like hitting where you shouldn't hit, it's not a sign that you are bad. It's a sign that you're using wrong brush size you're not holding the model in the right angle for your arm to reach yeah that's a very important distinction because i mean it's super annoying when you're painting and you keep hitting the wrong areas right so i'm telling you you are cool 
even if you hit the other models, I mean, other parts of the models that you didn't want to hit, and it's a sign telling you, please change your brush size. If you don't have a smaller brush size, it's telling you it's time to get one. <laughs> yep, this video is not sponsored by anybody except the Ministry of Leveling Up. Just totally made that up. Yep. Bad joke. Okay, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm happy with that color. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. And I'm going to paint the body that color as well. So there's a nice different tone across the different parts of the body. Okay, cool. And let's put more on his arms as well. Everywhere. I like this color, so I'm going to put it everywhere. I might regret it later, but I can always put more paint on top. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go slow here, because I'm, I don't have very good brush control, so I'm going to go slow. And this brush is ginormous, so slow. Okay, go slow. Turn it around, see if I've missed anything. Yes, I missed a lot. Is he wearing some kind of armband? Yep, he is. Okay, so I'm not painting that. I don't want to get his fingers though. Okay. And I'm telling you, this is too hard. It's perfectly cool to put this down pick up a smaller brush right totally cool Now, for those of you who's been painting for a while, or have watched enough YouTube videos on this, you would notice that what I have here is called wet palette. So a wet palette's designed to, of course, be a palette, hold your paint, duh. But all, what it also does is, it's it's got a layer of water behind it to keep your paint wet, so you can use it for longer. You can use it for blending and cool stuff like that. Now, there's a behavior of wet palette because being a wet palette, which means it has water, and your paint gets diluted with water. If you put thin paints on the wet palette, just saying, <laughs> don't quote me on this, just saying, there's a chance your wet palette by itself will dilute the color of your paint, causing you to have different paint to color. Uh, I think the key word here is hue, um, like how, how bright the color is over time if you're not careful, right? So it does happen. So I, I would suggest if you use contrast paints, try not to put them wet palette. Um, but for me, I think it's fine. I just keep mixing it. And I actually like a bit of color differentiation over time because I am not that creative. And by seeing new colors popping up, it actually helps me to be more creative. So that's why I do that. Okay, all right. So that looks good, I think. 
And that looks good. Can you guys also see like when the color dries, it's a different color. I don't know if you can see that. So yeah, it's important to let your paint dry before you put another layer on. True story. Oh, I just painted on my mic. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Watch John fail. By the way, I can't do a picture on picture on the painting and my screen is because I have just recently changed some of my gear so I don't have to switch at the moment but I have one coming so I mean I'm doing these kind of videos a thing by the time I do the next video um, I might have a switch anyway now what I want to do is I want to do a part of this model to be a darker yeah so I, I mean I like this red because it kind of looks like this one it's quite spritey it's not strong red it's definitely not this magenta pink and, and deeper red that i want to put on later but i do want to have a different layer on it so i'm going to use one of my favorites if i can find it and that's okay this one's very dark voluptuous pink but i want magos purple i really like this one okay so i'm going to do that now Oh yeah. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Gonna put another layer of this in. Yeah, I love it. Love that blend. It's almost like a wash. Like a a drooky purple wash and that's cool okay um and the reason why i'm trying to do this is i'm trying to give his body a slightly different layer of colors but still having that red pink tone yeah so that we're looking but even before dries looks different right so what i'm going to try to do now is um i am going to maybe make the top of that darker yeah like that Now, I'm going to dry my brush, take a smaller brush, and just gently wipe some of this paint towards the side. And the effect is going to be, it's going to be more paint at the top, and gently changing a different tone as I come down here i'm not sure if i'm correct here but i think that's called feathering <laughs> yep okay all righty so i've got a bit of tone here that's good i also want to put a bit more drew purple here gives the lines a bit more depth in the fingers Yep. So I'm essentially using it like a shade, but also a cool color blend. Yep. We can, of course, fix all this later as well. So not too worried about that. We're still in the early stages of this model. Actually, that might shock some of you. What? You spend one and a half hours, you're still in early stages. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just realized what I've said. Clarification. No, uh, it's not early, early stages. For people who like 
to play with the colors this is kind of early stages because i'm i still have a lot of the parts of the model that doesn't have paint right <laughs> like everywhere else and for some parts it's like got one layer of paint like this is not built up anyway oh there's a part of here leaves neat color But after you do base color, you can actually stop, right? If you want to, that's a perfectly good place to stop. Alrighty, what do we want to do next? I think... Now it's time to decide which next part to do. I think this helmet, is it's, it's fun. I mean, it's got a lot of options without looking weird. I can give it a metallic helmet. I can give it a bark looking color. I can make it red. I can make it green even. Um, so yeah, anyway, the helmet and the weapon, I'm going to leave until later because I've got a lot of flexibility in those. The shield, also a lot of flexibility because I mean, I can make it any texture. I can make it like plain. I can make it metal any color i want so i've got more freedom on those ones but the next big thing to decide is what color do i want the wings to be i think in the box art the sylvaneth arc revenant have green right green here and uh, the lines are highlighted or you know whatever um so yeah green turquoise M might be a better name for that but yeah to me light green I don't want green. I want red. So I'm doing do red. If I'm going to do red, I might do... I might start with a light purple. A really light one. And then have darker purple on these bits. Or black. Yeah, membrane and uh, black or maybe red even so i've got a lot of options but i think the color to tie this together is probably like very light purple and you know, without adding too much colors into it okay all right okay so that's been decided i don't know if that's a good decision but either way it's been decided so let's go okay let's go purple i've got purple on the on the tray already do i thin it down with contrast no i want it white so i'm going to go with the same formula i'm going to use the apothecary because I, I really like what the apothecary right did to the blood angels red so i'm going to try that as well now if this looks familiar i have learned i mean i have learned how to paint lady of vines through a gentleman or war hipster so i've kind of learned his um how he makes this color scheme so that's why this might be quite similar um i really like his stuff by the way if you if you like this video you should totally check out war hipster it's a cool dude I like his videos a lot okay what does that look like What does this look like? Oh yeah, okay. Let's see how, how that looks. See how the paint just settles in the gaps? Ah, that's so cool. Okay, I've decided. So what I'm going to do is... See how it's darker? Darker white? I'm going to try to gradient that later. Darker, darker, darker. Light. 
like this color. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that looks good. I like that. Okay, let's do it. Okay. So maybe what I'm gonna do next time is um I might prepare some of the color combinations a bit before I do the video so I can type it on screen and for the people who want to you know paint along yeah you can follow that well if I ever do another painting video that is yeah at this point that may not happen Ooh, need more white. Need more white. Too dark. Too dark. Okay. More white. Coming. I mean, apothecary right, which is not a real white. So complicated. So complicated. Why don't they just call it off white? Oh, this is beautiful. This wing is really something. I imagine someone at an expert level can spend hours just on these wings. It's beautiful. Very nice scope. Very nice. So if you're doing along with me, having some um, contrast paint, it really settles in the um, crevices of this model well, very well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now checking the time here one and a half hours into the video and we said well i mean i said at least in the beginning that i'm gonna time box this to a two hour video and see how far we can get so we have got we have got uh 21 minutes Let's see how far we go Next time, if I'm doing a painting video again, I need to prepare some snacks and some juice. Talk too much. And am I talking too much? Anyone who's watching, yeah, give me the feedback. Love to hear from you. Okay. All right. Done. So I've got the purple one now. I think this might be a good time to put another layer of purple directly on top to build it up before I do the red. Otherwise, the transition will be very strong. Like from that red to this straight away, I think it's a bit strong. And I've just looked at it from a different angle. So it needs to be fixed. So I'm going to do it now. Back here. Yeah. Definitely needs fixing right here and the chest here it's fixing the arm here it's fixing and i fixed it easy peasy easy peasy okay okay gonna get more purple down very nice So what I learned uh, from more hipster painting my Morathi model is that um, you can put colors on the darker part like this, just like this. And let it flow 
into the crevices. And when it dries, it would look quite good. I mean, and I'm not doing it properly, right? So if you've got good brush control, you get a better outcome than me. Now it's a bit heavy here, so I'm going to try to push the paint away. Um, yep, right here. So I just want to paint to go into the crevices where the membrane is. Oh, it's flowing everywhere. Okay, I need to clean that up. Just transferring paint <laughs> from here on to the other side. Yeah. Okay. By the way, one thing I've learned about contrast paint is big brushes for contrast paint, good. Big brush, contrast paint, good. Small brush, contrast paint, not as good. Okay, cool. Too much paint here, I need to take some off. Okay, wash the brush, clean the brush, get rid of some of this. It's too much. I'm gonna get some water right now. Yep. Okay, don't drink the water that I'm using to, <laughs> to wash the brush. All right, give me one moment, I'll be right back. So, at this point in time, it's time to change the music because I'm dying of thirst here. I'm gonna get some water. I'm gonna put a track on called Into Space. Alrighty, here we go. Let's continue. I've got water here. Yep, the water. And then cup from Paris. Party! Alright, let's continue. Now we've done that side. Ooh. Paint going everywhere. This is a syndrome of loading too much paint on the brush, but that's fine. That's fine. As long as you clean it up or have some means of cleaning it up after, you're totally fine. <clears throat> okay. Let's change to another song. Night Driving for our last home stretch on the last 15 minutes. Hey, let's go. Purple part on the sky. Beautiful. Excuse me. I ate a lot today. I had some bad noodle for dinner before. It's too hot today in Sydney. Hot. So not only do you get to learn about painting, beginner's painting, you also learned about Sydney's weather today. Hot. Sweaty hot. Now possibly because I took a little break to get water. You should be able to see the color tone difference between um, the new purple that I put down and the, and the same purple that I mix with the off-white or apothecary white that I use on the wings. And that created quite a nice 
color differentiation. Like you know by just looking at it, which part is the membrane and which part is the spines. Well, that's cool. And the same base color. Yep. Okay, I think I'm gonna paint this one purple as well. Yeah, because the the spine is purple. I think it'd be weird if I paint a different color at this point, so I'm just gonna go make us purple. You can do that. And now this is the point that I'm going to revisit and say, you remember how before we cleaned up some paint that was sitting here? If I didn't, when I do this step, those mishaps of my paintbrush would show up. And that's why I cleaned it up at the time. <laughs> While I'm doing this, I wonder if anyone's watching this ever. Um, if you are, have you guys heard the new battle boxes that's coming out for Christmas this year? They look pretty awesome. Any of you guys getting it? Seems very good value. Okay, so, so far, so good. Okay. Now at this point I want to fix anything that needs fixing. Before we call it a day on some of these parts. Got the brown in there, I want to fix that. I've been wanting to fix that forever. The pink looks good, the purple's good. Brown's good. Okay, there's a lot of good things going on here. It's good. Brown, a tiny bit here. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. Mm, maybe fix this part a little bit. I just want to tape it off. I don't want odd, odd shapes. Ah! Need to fix that. Tragedy. The feeling's gone. I can't go on this tragedy. Okay, that's done. Okay. Boom. Sweet. Okay, so, so far it's pretty good. Now, because we've only got 10 minutes left, we've got to make a decision here. Which part do we do next? I, I can, I guess I can start a whole different piece, like the helmet or the, or the weapon or the shield. I think the weapon and the shield Maybe I'm going to get some inspiration between this video and the next video and see what other people do because I think that gives me a good opportunity to change the colors a bit. Otherwise, it's just going to be all really red and purple. Uh, like if you look at the Lady of Vines, which I refer to often, it's got some gold bits, which makes it exciting. Um, like this. Yeah, it's got some gold bits. That makes it quite nice. Breaks up the colors. Um, so yeah maybe so so now then if i potentially have funky colors of this one and the shield i probably want the 
how I'm going to tie it together. So I'm going to go with purple. You know what? It's going to be so funny. If this end up to be the same. That's uh, the guy I was talking about. Because, you know, maybe he went through the same process. Or maybe his thinking process is embedded in my head a lot. Because I watched quite a few of his videos on painting Morathi and a whole bunch of Donald Kane stuff and Lady of Vines. So maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, that looks better. So having that purple off purple. Not just purple, off purple. Helps the whole look. Okay, that's that's good. All right. Mm, now then. Yeah. I'm really tempted to paint that gem now. Or gems now. But I should wait. Because if I don't paint them now, I still got to charge. I still have the uh, opportunity to change the color scheme and make it pop. Make it pop means, uh, you know, sexier later. Okay, I'm going to leave that. Um, what else can I do in 10 minutes? I could start highlighting some stuff. That might take a long time. Okay, well, no highlighting is good. We talked about dry brush briefly before so let's do it that was actually one of my favorite parts of painting early on dry brushing i still love it by the way still love it mm. so the concept of dry brushing is having a lighter color using a harder brush and just and just lay over the model and then because the brush that we're going to use for dry brushing is harder it will naturally hit the higher areas or the areas that comes up from the model as you brush it so the higher the the higher the, the particular part of the model is is going to be hit by this lighter color of the paint which kind of gives us the illusion of um depth right and that's exactly what we're going to try now i'm going to highlight a dry brush this part because it's dried already okay so Gonna follow the same formula as what I did for uh, Leader Vines, the Doomfire Magenta, and Fulgrim Pink. Oh. And I'm gonna put some on this texture palette. Ah, okay. So I've got, I've prepared two weapon of choices here. One is from the Dungeons and Dragons brush set. That's how I started. And then here I am using a super cheap makeup brush from Amazon. This is one fifth of the price of this guy. And this guy is already really cheap. So this is like dirt cheap. And uh, yeah, I want to see whether this cheap brush works just as well as the other one. So I'm going to use my uh, Arc Revenant here as a guinea pig. Yep. Yeah. Oh, if you look at the palette here. <laughs> This is the uh, the mark I left when I was painting Lady of Vines last time. Okay, so I'm going to do the same. I want to rub off most of the brush. I mean, we want to rub off most of the paint on the brush. You can do it on tissue, on your finger, or this is what they call a texture palette that's designed to have lots of bumps and lumps to take off a lot of excess paint. Okay, now it's starting to look good. So it doesn't give that mark anymore. We're ready. Let's go. Let's see if this works. I'm just going to start brushing this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that magic? Yeah. Okay, let's see if the, this iPhone camera can pick it up. Can you see the high, the, um, the part extruding? Is it getting hit by this brush? 
you can see like lines being highlighted and I'm like doing no work. Well, I mean, I'm doing a little bit of work, but not much. There's not much accuracy here. I'm just, just going crazy in a good way. And then magically it looks better. This is called working smart people. Now, what's the alternative to highlighting all of this? Yeah, what's the alternative to highlighting all of this? Well, you can do it by hand. <laughs> you can get a tiny brush and then go and highlight all the individual lines. Yeah, some people do that, and that's cool, right? If you have the skill and time to do that, do it. But me, oh, I wouldn't trade this highlight brush, um, dry brushing step for anything. Okay, I'm gonna need a little bit more. Round two. Check. Yep, okay. Looks all right. Now I, I'm particular I'm paying particular attention to the to the edge here. Because this face this this edge here facing the light. So in theory, well, my basic color theory is uh, should be brighter so that's why i'm brushing it more than some of the other parts yep because that should be highlighted likewise this part this part should be highlighted so i'm brushing it a lot then the paintbrush do the work Magic. Fix this part up as well. Okay. How's that look? Oh, that's got way more definition than before. Good job, Johnny. Good job. Is it perfect? Probably not. Does it look better than before? Yeah, I think so. Oh, too much. See that? Too much. I didn't check. I didn't wipe enough. So now I need to clean that up. <laughs> Rub it off. Almost the time's too late. <laughs> this, yeah. God damn it. Sorry, language. Now, I can dry brush all of these leaves. Yep. And at the bottom of the model, that's exactly what I'll do. Because no one's really going to pay too much attention to the leaves down here. Well, I think anyway. And uh, but the top of the model is different. Now, these areas people would actually look at. So to finish off the painting video today, part one, yeah, I'm gonna highlight this part with a real brush. the edge of the leaf the paint is not transferring okay it's time to bring out the small brush Bing. okay it's all much better much better Now, you don't have to do this step if this is too daunting for you or simply not interesting for you. Don't do it. 
I do it because last time when I painted Lady of Vines, I enjoyed this process. Highlighting some of the leaves. And doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah? That's another very important point. It doesn't have to be perfect. It will still look amazing. Because what happens is the human eye will pick up the highlight and the differentiation of color very well. So as soon as you put that lighter color on it, your eye is going to pick it up like a missile. Okay. And of course, the back side. Can't see very well here. My eye angle. <laughs> it's so uh, obstructed in the back end. I can't actually see what some of the stuff that I'm doing here. I'm a bit blind, but it's the last couple of minutes, so off worth setting it up again you get the drift of what i'm trying to do here I'm just trying to put a very thin layer of this light pink on the cherry blossom to get that highlighted effect now if you compare what's up here with the manual dry um, high edge highlighting Call them edge highlighting because it's right on the edge, right? Versus some of the one down here done by dry brushing highlight. Is there a big difference? Well, you can be the judge of that. Nope. No one can tell you how your mo your model should look. That's up to you. Now at this point, you can. Go, I mean, you can really go back to any part of the model and, and do as much work as you want on it um, to fix things or even, you know, how you can go crazy and uh, rebase the whole thing and put new layer of color on it. You can do whatever you want at this stage or any stage of the model. Um, I, I would see some people would go back well, on YouTube videos out there. They'll go back and fix a lot of stuff. But I think for most of us mere mortals, we just want to get more uh, miniatures on the table. You don't need to do that. Yeah. Now, what I've just demonstrated, hopefully, is with some basic base colors using contrast paints. I've got a lot of colors in this model already. And I have to say, um, even without a lot of work, uh, it kind of looks pretty decent. Yeah. Can it look better? Sure. Sure it can. But I'm quite happy with this. In fact, I'm going to disregard what I've said earlier. <laughs> Stop exactly in two hours and just add another five minutes of injury time, extra time, to highlight um, the, the wooden parts with a dry brush using Karak Stone. Now, for anyone out there, it doesn't really matter what the name of the the paint that you use i used this because i followed um war hipster when i was doing the lady of vines um but i mean you can you can do whatever you want the moral of the story is you just want a brown that is lighter yeah what shade you want well that's up to you yeah anyway i'm gonna stick with the same formula as what i did for for the big lady here so i'm gonna use carrick stone and i'm gonna use the Slightly smaller dry brush. Oh, well, you know what? Let's take the same one. Oh, this might have pink on it. Yeah, okay. Because I'll wash this after the video, right? Ooh, too much. Okay. That's cool. Just it a bit like last time ok 
Can you see magic happening? I see magic happening. So this dark brown is getting lighter by the second. Now, if any part that's too hard to get to right now, it doesn't matter. We can clean it up later, right? We want. You must have heard of the eighty twenty rule. We want to spend twenty percent of the time getting eighty percent of the good looks for this model, and then if you feel like it later on, you can spend a bit more time to move the eighty into a hundred or two hundred, whatever you want, because this is your model. It is your hobby time. Now, probably if you're watching this closely, deep down inside you, as you watch me dry brush this guy, part of you might be screaming, "Oh my God, Johnny! You, your brush is hitting everything. <laughs> you're putting this Karak stone on everything." And the answer would be, "Yeah, you're right." I, I I am, especially here, right? I'm going to show you. I'm going to put Counterstone like crazy on these vines because it makes it look better, right? That's the first one. And I know I'm going to put a different color on top of this. And this color, when dry brushed this way, is so light. As soon as I put another color on it, I know it's going to cover it. So it doesn't matter. That's why I'm going crazy. Well, not crazy, crazy, but yeah, quite um, generous in where I'm sending this paint to on the model. Everywhere. Yeah, we can fix up some of the dark bits later. All right. So, how does this look now? I don't know, you tell me, you be the judge. I think it looks pretty good. It looks way more table ready than before we started the video today, that's for sure. Um, yeah, now here's a question for you. Did you find this video interesting? Was it useful? Um, did it help you at all? Would you want to see another one? Would you, would you watch it, right? Do you want a format changed? I don't know. There's a lot of question marks in my head. Um, but of course, this is the first one I've ever done. So if you are listening to this at this stage, thank you. Thanks a lot. I uh, really appreciate it. And um, love to hear what you think. Because ultimately, I guess this is, you know, for you guys who watches this stuff. So if you think I should skip ahead, I should um, go faster. Or go slower, talk less, more, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, put it in a comment below or send us a message. I think we have the community feature available in our channel now. So, yeah, if you want to talk to us, uh, let us know. And with that, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, check us on our other videos. But right now, you probably don't want to do that because the World Cup is on and you've just watched this for a long time. So, uh, once again, thank you. Um, and I should change the camera. So I'm talking to you. And you're not talking to my brushes. Okay, is that working? Is that working? No, it is not working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so something happened to the app. Uh, I can't change the camera angle for some reason. So I'm just going to leave it as is now. So yes, thank you for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And we are going to be doing more reviews in the next videos, I think. Uh, we've been playing ISS Vanguard a lot. And I've been missing the Warhammer scene. So I might do a video of the last 
Warhammer event I went to just to uh, um, relive some of those moments. I really miss it, playing it. Um, yeah, it's been really good fun. So anyway, thanks. Thanks, guys. See you next time.